I'm Wes and I make websites and I've been working with, you know, Sam and Jet and that whole crew for about a year now. Wesley.codes. I think Sam plugged my site once as like Wes.codes and that's like another guy. <laughs> Nice Sam. Uh, nice Sam. Awesome. Yeah, I'm sure he's a good. He's a good coder. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's great too. He didn't work on Fish Tank. Uh. <laughs> All right, listen up, Sergeant Frank Woods. Call of Duty. You had better. You had better be watching Sly Elliot do his thing on YouTube. This is some special stuff. Woods out. says I don't think that most people understand the immense magnitude of achievement that season one of fish tank was like I have a background in media production doing that for years but I also have education in programming and I'm a web developer full-time as well and so watching Fish Tank was like the craziest thing imaginable to me because I understand like just how ambitious and technically challenging the production side is and the web design side of it is. And so it was it was the most impressive thing to me that came out of 2023, hands down. Like watching that was just amazing. And you guys did amazing work on that project. And, you know, like absolute congrats are due to to you and the rest of the team for sure, because it, it is it was a crazy thing what you guys managed to pull off. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's it's not like anything else I've worked on, that's for sure. And uh there's a lot of like I'm just like I'm just one part of it. But there's like a whole whole team of people writing and, and doing all kinds of stuff. It's, it's been wild. For the first week or two, even the site was it was up at first, and then it went down for a while, and then they had to move to YouTube. And I thought, like, I can't imagine <laughs> what is going on behind the scenes right now for the rest of that team on the back end, like. When that all happened and you realized like this is bigger than we expected, uh, you know, and things did start to catch on fire. I think for like a something that's live in the moment, you have people watching and trying to get on like it's it's too late. You know, you can't go back. What was that like? Were you kind of cool in the pocket and you just try to put your head down and get it fixed? Or were you like kind of in panic mode? Yeah, I just remember like very early on. You know, when things were like very uncertain and we had a lot of problems, just uh, working with Sam and Jet, they were super professional and like really level headed. But even when things were on fire, we didn't know if the site was going to go down or what. They were very professional, very much just like wanting to solve the problems and move forward. So they've been really great to work with in that thing. Like, in that regard it's it's something that i definitely want to like communicate because i think that like you know they kind of have this reputation of like being like trolls or whatever and and like i think that there's been like some cases where people are like oh we don't want to work with them because of what but in my experience they've been like just super professional and it's been great working with them so I thought it was really important to give them their flowers because i i got the same impression like a production like that does not get pulled off by people having like shitty practices in how they handle a production like that. Like Jet as a producer was insanely talented. And I can say like I've worked with Hollywood producers in on feature length films and I've worked on shorts. I've worked in commercial projects like the way Jet handled things as a producer, especially for the calamity of that environment, like for how he handled everything and all the drama and stuff, he was an amazing producer, like A plus what some of the highest caliber behavior I've seen from a producer and how he handled that production. The way that they operate, I could tell they were very professional and I could tell that they would probably be way less problematic to work with than half of these other working professionals in that industry that you could find like you know what i mean like they keep it yeah, there's, real there's no bullshit and i think that also like when things go wrong people tend to show their true colors and like a lot of stuff went wrong and they were you know they still 
stay cool and professional and they were never losing their their minds or they were they were showing and uh I totally agree. That is like, that's the ultimate test. And in mark my words, you know, when you're working with somebody like that, it will be put to the test at some point. It may take years. It may take, you know what I mean? But you will find out like how, when the chips get down, like how do they act? And a lot of people like you're not going to like it. So it's the fact that they were still so cool is a really big indicator of just them, I think, as people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I remember when after that website had gone down the first time and uh, Sam called me and asked me if I was doing okay. I was like, are you asking me? Like, wow. I felt like responsible. Um, he was. Because uh, was, was, he knows, didn't... like, as a creative person who's who's worked, you know, as a professional for some, I think he knows what that's like. You know what I mean? And yeah. And I think that's really was super big. stressful. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, I, that's huge. Understanding each other, you know, it does seem like even though they don't know exactly how to code all that, like they still understand what in some capacity kind of what you're experiencing and going through. And and that's, I think, paramount to like a good working relationship. Yeah. It sounds like even though it was very difficult, it was still a fun project to work on when it was working, when it when it finally was all working. It I think sounds it hurt more than it didn't. But yeah, there was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah some, chunks, some, some gaps it definitely like after those first few weeks when you got everything sorted out it i think it worked perfectly it yeah it got and that was the majority of the time was it was weeks and weeks of it being stable and um i think that's how people are going to remember it i don't think most people will even remember that there were two weeks where it was streaming on youtube you know what i mean especially because the website makes such an impression on the user like you can't imagine like experiencing fish tank differently because it's just such yeah. a like it, and it's such a tactile experience too. You know what I mean? Like just maneuvering through everything. Like you, it's very memorable to interact with that site, the sights and sounds and everything like that. So I don't think anyone's going to remember that there were even problems, which is great, <laughs> which is great. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Thanks man. I'm really glad that you liked it. I'm, I'm really glad that people, people liked it too. Cause a lot of work. A lot of, from a lot of different people, not just me, but you know, they were on the team. So yeah, yeah, a lot of people I think love the project. A lot of people it really resonated with, and it ex exceeded the audience that like Sam and stuff they usually have. Like there, were, it, it was accessible to so many new people that it captured. Yeah. There's something about it that chronically online, uh, <laughs> like uh, desire we have to to engage with reality TV and stuff like that. Like it just scratched that itch so much. Yeah, it definitely it definitely drew in really really large crowd. Like way more than we were expecting. Way more than we planned for. Yeah, I hope the servers, I hope your <laughs> all that is ready for season so two too. for everything. Do you have a yeah. staging site that you like what does that look like? Is this like do you you don't test in production, I assume. So like you have a staging site yeah. where yeah, you are a staging site, yeah. Which is basically like a beta. I was calling a beta because I don't think most people know what staging means. And um yeah, there's just a staging, it's just one layer between this and production. And uh, is where I, did it. Yeah. I don't know how much you you game or anything like that. You said Diablo two is your favorite game. I personally think that that is from a much simpler time in gaming and even software development. Uh, you know, I, I don't think they make games like they used to. I'm I kind of prescribe to that. Like modern games really annoy me, and a lot of them have moved towards agile, like software as a service kind of things. Like, do you think that if you do, if you are a gamer? Do you think that software as a service and that agile style of development has kind of hindered the modern games industry for software, or do you think that it's for the best? Oh, definitely. I think, yeah, I could, you, you asked me what my favorite game was in Diablo 2 came to mind. That's just something I played, like, just I played a lot of it, like, growing up, and it's, like, really addictive, and, yeah, it's much more simple. And I think, yeah, now games are, like, way too complicated now. I think I tried, like, uh, one of the new Call of Duty games or something. Like I can't even get through the menus. Like I don't know what's going on. 
Yeah, yeah, it's definitely uh, overcomplicated and confusing. The UI and UX is not not great. I don't know why it keeps getting more confusing uh, as the years go on. Um, they need the the they need you. They need you on there. I mean, like the UI, <laughs> <laughs> the UI and UX for Fish Tank was pretty solid. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, simple. Keep it simple. You know what I mean? I love it. You're a musician as well. I saw. I don't know if you still play, but you seem. It seemed like you had some really great fret work too, when you were uh, oh, practicing a lot. Do you think that there's an overlap in like the skills of music and programming at all? Um, I don't think so. I didn't play as much music as I as I used to. That's definitely like something I just do for fun on the side. But I think like programming, I'm good enough to actually make money doing it and. It's, it's, uh, I, I can't say that about music. Um, I don't know if there's overlap in the skills, maybe just like grinding at it. It's one of those things where you gotta like do a lot of repetitive stuff until it becomes kind of second nature. Mm. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's true. I wanna like, I, I, one project that I actually just launched, um, I, I made a website for, a rapper called Lil Darky, and uh, that went live like a couple weeks ago, maybe. I'm really happy with how that that turned out. And uh, actually, there's like a drum sampler we made like into the website. But, yeah, if you check it out, it's lildarky.com. Uh, I'm, I'm happy how how, how this this project. That's really cool. Wow. Yes, yeah, so, like you, yeah. you have a lot of different like projects on your your GitHub. You so you just even in your free time for fun, you're still coding. You're still making little side softwares and and little applets and stuff. Constantly, man, I'm just constantly making stupid stuff. Just tinkering. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, you you gotta really love it when you clock out and then you're like, all right, I'm getting back in VS Code and we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, definitely. And if like if if there's like programmers that like wanna get to the next level or get really good to be able to just kind of do any kind of project, I think when just making your own stuff. It yeah, helps. that and contributing to open source, I think, was like a really big, like, help for me. Um, I contribute a lot to this like uh, uh, open source project called Mantine. It's like a, it's like a library for for React, and it's like it's pretty popular. And I think like once I started making like meaningful contributions to these open source projects, then just I got like a lot of opportunities. Um, because it shows that you can kind of just jump into the middle of another project that's not yours and like do something productive in it, which is like really hard to do. Yeah, and I would say that's harder than writing something from the ground up would be to jump into like another already existing project and and fix bugs or build features in that. I think most often in the professional world, you know, when it comes to programming and software development and stuff, it's like that is the majority of the situations. Like you're going to get hired on to some organization that has a it's probably, it, you know, the project might be a mess. There might not be any documentation. Oh, yes. You know, it's just like, no, you know what I mean? So you're always going to get thrown into the thick of it. And you ha it's like it's an essential skill to be able to adapt and kind of figure out how do you now add or fix you know what's already here that you didn't write you had nothing to do with and now you have yeah. inherited all of this stuff that is like the majority of the situation um and yeah. so i think you're right that that's like the most important kind of quality you can have it's interesting because open source you know it is a really good avenue towards that and then you also have like this community um approach of like there, there's all these people that are passionate about the project and problem solving and stuff that are all contributing and you can all kind of uh talk to each other and communicate about these these different things and it's like i think it's a really good way to learn um yeah open source is really cool. it's cool that you have such an affinity for open source and and everything like that that's yeah. really cool definitely got to make the fish tank uh the fish tank stuff open source um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, I think that, uh, you know, and that's definitely even in my work that I do, 
I same situation, you know, you come into I came into an organization that just has it's not it's not good. It's you know what I mean? And then you have to a lot of documentation. The guy that wrote the code's dead. <laughs> Something. Yeah. Don't even get me started on that. Oh <laughs> my god, that's too close to home. Um <laughs> that's so crazy that uh, I think it's, it's how it is though. It that's is like, that's the world. It's it, the grass is always greener. I've gone through like enough projects to to know there's never like I've never seen like a code base that was like, wow, this is they got a, they got it together. This is don't touch anything, guys. Yeah. No, it's it's always like it's always just like stop isn't right. The patterns are mismatched, and that's so yeah. funny. I think that that makes me feel better. I think that would make a lot of people feel better to hear that too. You know, I think it's it's easy to feel like. <laughs> 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 Everything's yeah, like true, <laughs> true. Yeah, but I think it's like the thing of like everyone's just trying to figure it out in all industries. Like I, you know, and I experienced the same thing in the media production world. You think like, oh, this Hollywood crew that's coming out to to film with us, like they're gonna be no, like they're also just they have no idea. Like they're just flying by yeah. the seat of their pants. You know what I mean? And that's it. It is like there's some solace you can take in that that it's it's not just you and and we're all just trying yeah. to figure it out failing forwards or whatever they call it like, failing upwards yeah yeah yeah. that's yeah. what it feels like yeah I, that that imposter syndrome of like well because you have a formal education in programming like you have a degree and yeah, yeah. i'm largely self-taught like i i went to trade school for programming and i got certifications and stuff and i had to like take tests and went to competitions and stuff but like i'm largely self-taught for like this a lot of the stuff i do now do you think that it's essential to have a degree in this field for programming and stuff like that at this point? Or do you think it is possible to kind of self-teach a lot and get into the industry? You can self-teach. I think, yeah, everything you need to know, you can, you can self-teach. There's some like computer science stuff that helps. And I think like the networking part of school is definitely helpful. Some people just need that environment where they, they have to study and focus. But yeah, most learning is going to happen on the job anyways or come from actual projects. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, I totally agree. And that's, and that's scary. You know, I think to a lot of people that's scary, but it's, I think it's good because it's still an industry that it has, you know, you really can, I think, get some, some good work if you really want it, you know, if you really want to work and, and make some cool stuff, people can notice you really do have an opportunity there. Um, and there are a ton of resources, uh, you know, that you can tap on, like what you said, you look up a lot of YouTube tutorials and stuff. Is that like your go-to it when no, you can. I, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't really look up a lot of YouTube tutorials. To be honest, I. I, uh, I don't know. I um. I just kind of make stuff, and and now I'm. I just have a point where I feel like I can make whatever. I look more more into docs than YouTube tutorials. I think uh, if you make something from like a YouTube tutorial, you're kind of might be. Two two on rails, you know, yeah. making it in a certain kind of way, and and a lot of the tutorials aren't even good. Like some of the stuff is, you know. yeah, or it's outdated and, and not useful yeah. anyway. And you know, there's a big problem with that too. Yeah, no, I totally agree. That's that's pretty good advice as as well. Uh, look into the look into the documentation as opposed to yeah. someone else who interpreted the documentation and then, you know, posted something about it uh, for a tutorial. Yeah, it's a pretty good advice. Um, I like reading stuff more. Sometimes I just want to read, not yeah. watch a YouTube video. <laughs> I can do it a too long. Right. Yeah, I think for a lot of things, it's easier to just have that documentation and be like, look, this is the Bible. This is this is the the thing right here. And if it's not in here, you know, that I know I can't trust it fully. You know what I mean? So it's like nice yeah. to have that to fall back on. How much would you, if you can, and I know you kind of touched on it earlier, just a ballpark. I'm so interested. Like how much do you think the whole website build cost? Like just ballpark. Uh, man, 
Well, what did you say? You guessed like 15,000. It's more than that. So I actually had, <laughs> just to be clear, I had two parts of that video that I recorded. I recorded a whole other part where I talked about your you know, having your Stripe and like all the conversions for your transaction fees and uh, all the conversion rates for your, your insight currency and stuff. I recorded all that, but that first video, like no one was really that into it as opposed to the other stuff I was posting. I was like, I guess I won't even upload the second part. Um, uh, no, I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> now I'll have to, now I'll have to finish it. But cause I recorded it all when the site was still live all the way back then. And I was digging through the, you know, kind of the back end a little bit, whatever I could see uh, and stuff like that. And, you know, talking about some of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I would imagine the site probably cost in, I, I would say 50 to 70. Probably. I like, I'm not trying to withhold information. I don't think it's a secret. I just, uh, I don't have it all in front of me. There's a lot of different moving parts to it and a lot of things to consider. Like uh, the video, that like the the video hosting was is is probably the most expensive part of that, and um, that's one of the things that we tried to do when we first started. And so I was using AWS. And I had like an EC2 server and was running this streaming server on it, and I had that behind CloudFront, and that's what we used just before the website went went down. Uh, and we put it up on YouTube because. It was like uh, hemorrhaging bandwidth. Like it was using insane amounts of bandwidth, and I, there was no time to like figure out why and try to fix it. It just had to go. Um, and so after that, then we moved to Cloudflare, and Cloudflare has like a live stream video hosting service, and that's like thirty five thousand dollars just for that service alone. And that's just the, that one part of it. That's not including any of the databases or any of the web hosting. And this, we had a different CDN for like images and, and, and stuff like that. When I was watching it, before I even made the video or anything to break it down, like I was like, I wonder what the bandwidth is like for that. Like, I wonder how the servers are are configured to like make any of this work. Because in my mind, I was like, I don't understand how this can be done for like any reasonable amount of money, like all these video oh, feeds so for twenty four seven for a month, I'm like, how? yeah, and and <laughs> from the site first started, like uh, we um, we wanted, I, I had it so just like the, the the camera that you click on, focus on, they they wanted like um, to see them all at the same time, like ten ten live streams at once, so like that instantly like ten next to them. We had to stop doing that. Was we that can't have was, ten live streams <laughs> running at once on the website? Was that so one of those things? Watching. Was that one of those things that they asked for? Where they're like, "No, no, we want all ten of them to be live in the preview." Was that one of those things where you were like, yeah, and, and there's "No, a, no, no"? There's a way. <laughs> there's a way to do that that wouldn't cost like that wouldn't involve running like ten streams. Like you would like pop them, but like I didn't do that. I just ran ten streams, which is a terrible idea, huge mistake, uh, and so. No. You know when the client asks you for something and it's like, uh, I could, I in my head, you're like, oh, I, I could do that. But you kind of try to talk them out of it. You're like, well, but what if you do it this way? Like, wouldn't that be it's hard to explain? Yeah. They're like, well, we want to see all 10 at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. But that's 10 streams. <laughs> yeah. But you're like, yeah, minutes. but what if then in my head, you did like 2000 people? Like, mm. it's whatever. And then it ends up being like 50. Yeah. And so the totally different <laughs> number. That's crazy that so many people tuned in. Like it really was. I was shocked too because I've had the same thought process when I was like, well, it's probably going to be around what the YouTube streams are. And I was like, because there's no way that many more people are going to go to some random off site, you know, place that they've never heard of before. I was like, so it's probably going to be smaller than the YouTube audience. And I was like, it's shocked when I saw how many people were on there in the first few weeks. Yeah, it went viral again. It, yeah, it, it spun up pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, it definitely it became part of the culture real quick. It was trend. That was trending <laughs> for it was trending for a month straight almost like crazy. You got you know I can't wait to see what you guys do for season two. Like I, I'm very oh, excited. Crazy. 
Yeah. Yeah, you can check out the website now too if you want. There's like a lot more stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's there's a lot more going on the website. We added a whole RPG game system That's into crazy. it. That's crazy. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait for that. People are gonna go. I I really hope season two is even more even more successful than one you guys deserve it and are you gonna have any help this time for season two have you have, have you uh, well, same, well, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> respect uh prayers for you man <laughs> you know what i mean i i hope it goes well i hope it goes smooth uh i'm someone's gonna break out of showing the way yeah well, if you need any need any help QA testing or anything like that, you know you have my info. I can always uh, <laughs> I can always help. Um, you you are really into the JavaScript. I saw. Like, why ha- did you gravitate so much towards JavaScript for what you work on? Is it just like it's a language you just really got into? It's really versatile, and it has that. It's lucid and kind of it's not as strict in what it requires, you know, to make things work, you know, because I know you kind of talked about that. I like JavaScript because I make web, I make websites and JavaScript and websites, it, it makes sense. Um, and I just wanted to keep everything in the same language. But we actually used uh, some Go and Python because uh, there's like a whole sort of back end. We had some a server running in, in the house that also connected into the the database that people would send these text-to-speech messages on and use items on, and um, they would go to like a uh, the text-to-speech service of Google Cloud and generate the sound files and then play them into the speakers inside the house. So that was using Go and, and Python. Um, so there is like a there is some other stuff in the in the mix there, but for for web stuff, I just go you. I use JavaScript because that's what is running in the browser anyway. Like you said, it's it's flexible. It's what I know. Yeah, that's uh, the <laughs> what I know. That's definitely uh, you kind of get married to a, a language after a while. I feel like, and then you you you're like, oh, this is I'll just make it in this. You know, <laughs> like you don't really want to go and learn a whole new a whole new language. Yeah. It might not be the best. Like there could be better things to do to to write it with. But problem with websites, if it's a website, it's, yeah. I'm also using TypeScript too, which is I guess a subtle difference, but it's a difference. <laughs> what was like the most fulfilling part for you, like working on this project? Like what was was there like a particular moment where you were able to sit back? And kind of be like, this is crazy. This is awesome. Or were you not able to enjoy it at all <laughs> for the whole time? No, I was wondering that when it first started, and like, um, you know, my girlfriend was asking me that too. She's like, are, are you going to be able to like sleep? Like, is, is that some point the sun going to like run itself? Are you going to constantly have to like be turning? So, I, but uh, yeah, at some point when we had everything kind of roped in, I didn't need constant maintenance. I don't remember exactly when that was. That's so crazy. I can't imagine. Like, do you have any advice for, you know, like, obviously, this this project is kind of an outlier. It's very ambitious and everything like that. But to pull something like this off, I mean, it was a lot of sleepless nights. There was a lot of sacrifice there. Do you have any advice? Like, what was your guiding principle or guiding kind of light at the end of the tunnel when you were in the thick of it? And you're like, I can't sleep. I have to stay up and make sure this project goes well. Like, you know what I mean? Just fixing stuff, just stuff that needs to get fixed. Um, advice. I, I just think like, think like, even like the small bugs, just imagine them like 100x. And like, you have to think about everything like way bigger than it is because it might just be a little tiny thing. But then we had like, like in total, uh, there was about 200,000 active users, like, uh, in total. Not everyone. So most we ever had on was probably like 40,000, I think, sometimes when Sam would, would come on. So, like, whatever bug you have, it's just, you think, like, it's small, but then 
immediately 200,000 people are affected by it. And it, then it's hard to like also hear through the noise, like what's going wrong in the... Yeah, because I'm sure you're seeing a lot of feedback, you know, in the moment where you're like, you have to decide, is this actually feedback you should listen to? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what can I fix now? Mm -hmm. What can I fix in like five minutes? What's going to take me like three hours to fix and and trying to triage all of them? Mm. Um, But yeah, I guess the advice would just be like, think like a (laughs) hundred and everything you kind of do, like. Oh, will this work? But will it work if two hundred thousand people do it? Like it'll work if a thousand people do it. But two two hundred thousand people will this whole thing explode now? So thinking like that, right? Because it's like it, you know, if this bug uh, you only encounter ten percent of the time when you're QAing, it's like well, ten percent of two hundred thousand is still a lot of people. <laughs> like they're still yeah, yeah. The exponential. Like that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Do you, did you have like a thought process of how did, how did you, and this is something I always have to deal with of like someone reports a bug or someone reports something like that. And then you go, how high of a priority should this be? Like how severe is the issue? Does it affect things that make money? I assume is probably also a big factor. Um, and then like, how often is it occurring? Like, do you have like some way that you kind of had to prioritize in the moment? Nothing that's like concrete just kind of you know if it's breaking any of the core functionality of the website it's obviously super high priority and if it's like stuff people pay for that's even more so because like if people are having issues with their season passes after they pay for them that's the fixed this right way because people are spending money on this and then not getting what they paid for so that would be super high priority but then sometimes people come to me and be like, hey, this image, it looks a little squished or this button's a little weird looking color. It's like, okay, well, I'll fix that when I get to it. I'm interested, like working with a client, you know, in even though it is these guys that we all know, like still, you know, it is like a client project that you're kind of working on. And what is it like? Yeah. Uh, like, I assume that, you know, Sam is not a, a seasoned web developer and neither is Jet exactly, you know, as much as, as you do it full time. And so like communicating with them, like how much of it is them just describing things and you have to kind of figure out what they mean or like, like, how was that language? language barrier between like the programming knowledge how did that work in terms of the production process yeah well i think one of the things i actually really like working for sam and and the rest of, rest of these guys with is they, they have a lot of creative freedom so like they just shared with me that image that i shared with you really and like we want to make this and then then they just leave me alone and i go and i make it and then i bring it back to them and that are very like, well, that's good, that's bad, change this, do that. I'm like, okay. So it's like, it's very, uh, there's a lot of freedom. I have a lot of freedom to just do, try things and tweak stuff. And they're very straightforward in their feedback. If they like something, they don't like something and they have good taste, so. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, that's uh, that's good to hear. I can understand why you keep working with them then, because that sounds like a fairly uh, painless process, you know, to work with them. Sometimes working with clients, it's oh, it's, it's painful. It's oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> but it's like uh, it's good. There's yeah, of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even when things are like on fire and and, and going crazy, they they're all very professional and level headed. Yeah, they weren't free. And I imagine, yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting, too, because sometimes when you don't know, I think it can go either way. It's sometimes it's like if you do know how it works, you're more freaked out. Or if you don't know how it works, maybe you won't be as freaked out or maybe you don't have an idea of what's actually wrong. So you're even more scared and you think everything's broken. You know, so it's interesting that they kept their cool so much through that and they just trusted you to kind of, you know, get yeah. through it. Yeah, for sure. Because there were some times in that during the show where I'm like, I was thinking like, this is, this is dead. This is, yeah, we're not going to make it over to this. And we did. Yeah. And we got shut down from Google originally. Like, uh, yeah, that was crazy. So what was so. that? That was like, I would imagine Google saw, oh, there's 
50,000 concurrent users on this website that just launched. It has insane amounts of uh, data usage that it's going through. This seems weird. This is like a weird yeah. outlier thing, and we're going to flag it. And then we, we, we paid a $20,000 bill on a credit card with you know, Sam's name on it, and it's under my Google account, and I'm in Finland. It's so shady. So they learned a lot of shit accounts. Like, uh, and then that happened on Friday. Uh huh. So, like, no, oh. we don't have any customer support plan. We don't do anything on the weekend. So, it was just, just like, like, what do we do? What do, we do? Right now? That's ban, ban. The, 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 the original, original tank, tank, tank uh, is still, still banned. banned. I can, I can, I can, I can show, show you, you. The, the Google Cloud product, it's, it's suspended. Wow. They, uh, and um, after that, we had to do it, launch it again because. Google is very like bureaucratic. Like if you can get some kind of like enterprise support plan, which we did not have at that time, and it was a bit late in the middle of it to get something like that. You were using Google Cloud. Yes, Firebase. Yeah. Did you move away from that after the suspension happened, or did you just remake it again? Remake it again. <laughs> now it's uh, using something called Superbase. Just like a Firebase alternative. Yeah, good call. Um, good call <laughs> to to do that. Yeah, this is nice to work with. I, I I actually liked it, and uh, by the end of it, like I kind of like got a, got a grip on it. Um, there's like a this. It's really easy to like make mistakes that can cost a lot of money if you're using Firebase. If you don't like do something right, but then once you get a hang of it, uh, it becomes pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, Google is really, it's the best way to put it, very bureaucratic. And they, I'm sure that they also may not have liked the, maybe the content of the site either when they went to audit it, you know, that might've had even something to do with it. Uh, but yeah, it just sounds like that was the perfect storm of looking shady instantly to Google's crawling bots uh, when you launched, like just everything that you could do to look like a red flag, even though it was legitimate uh it's totally legit <laughs> yeah 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 so that's crazy yeah like so you got suspended from google and then you had the server issues so it was like everything kind of crescendoed oh that just hurts that really hurts it was, it was very stressful and uh i did not really know what i was going to do so yeah because google shut us down the amazon video hosting was costing ten thousand dollars a day uh, like everything was breaking so i had to very quickly coordinate my like you know get my bearings and and find a way through that's such a skill man to like be that cool under pressure especially as a one-man band with all that going on and then you know that there's tens of thousands of users that are like waiting for it to go live yeah. again like that's and crazy we, yeah and we were worried that we'd lose like um by route like it's steam by going down like people aren't going to come back so that was yeah a concern do you think that it and, do you think that it did affect like viewership severely i don't, know. I don't think so people came back pretty quickly yeah, kind of added to the story. Yeah. Looking back, it kind, of, it kind of was part of its whole weird, crazy story. I think it's shut down by so, every yeah. <laughs> no one wanted us online. Like it's such, you know now you get to have that moniker, that tagline. Yeah, like the mythos <laughs> that no one, no one wanted us online. But it <laughs> 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 like the mythos that sam was creating even in the moment like i remember him coming into the house and he's like hosting's costing us ten thousand dollars and a lot of people took that as a bit like a lot of people interpreted that as a bit at first but i heard him say that and i was like i think he's mad for real that sounds like not a joke like i could definitely see how it costs that much if you look at his twitter he, he posted the text message of him paying the the google bill or whatever yeah. And then we immediately got banned when that was paid. <sighs> That's because... wild. Oh, so yeah, you paid they, it, then they suspended you. They, because, uh, like, 
I, I'm running this Google account. I'm yeah. Finland. My name yeah. is Wes, not Sam. I'm paying a twenty thousand euro yeah. bill with a with an American card. Like it just there was insane amounts of traffic. Yeah. It, it just triggered whatever kind of like you know whatever uh, their bot detection bots. It, it triggered them and they 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 locked us. It was like a, it was like an automatic thing, mm-hmm. and it was on Friday, and it, and no one we didn't have any support plans, and no one's gonna help us until at least Monday, yeah, like soonest Monday, yeah. And then we were kind of getting the run around, like thank you for sending your support tickets, we'll investigate this and get back. And so we're like, oh shit, like we don't have time to go through the the whole right, yeah, support song and dance. Like we need we need this unlocked. Yeah, Google support's rough, man. If you don't have a direct rep that you can call at Google, you are ju- at this point, especially like post COVID, like you're just going to get the runaround. It's it's egregious how they roll at this point, especially when like you know uh, my my partner has a business and like for re- the review process of um, the business, like Google business listings and stuff like that, even that has become so like bureaucratic and too stringent to the point where like it's a legitimate business registered in the state with like it's all of its you know tax id info and everything like that all registered right and google still will not like approve the listing properly and there's no one you can call and it's all automated now it's awful it's so awful to deal with i think you guys made the right call getting a little further away from it yeah it's that that's something that we're definitely doing intentionally and it's tough because there's like a, these cloud providers they definitely have somewhat of a, a monopoly on, on these services like google does offer some of the best like web hosting yeah. stuff firebase is a great service but you, then you have to be under you know google's thumb yeah i mean it's the same with like amazon with aws it's like yeah, if you don't yeah. want to use that, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like, it has its issues, but it's, God, it's so powerful. You know, they have so much. Uh, so, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. That I think, like, yeah. early on, what you decide to build your foundation on those services, like, that really can make it or break it sometimes with, like, the kinds of issues that you'll encounter, you know, because the moment you need support, you're going to wish that you maybe went with a... <laughs> a more responsive company as your third party. You know what I mean? Like, And it's, it's so hard to write off of them. So like if you write something with Firebase or you something on AWS, like if you, you just decide, no, we want to move off of it, it becomes so hard, especially if you have like a, a larger project or you're, you're deep into it. So yeah. When like we were going down, shit was catching fire. There were a lot of people like reaching out to help. And I don't... I haven't seen like names or anything, but a lot of people like helped and, and, and gave us contacts at Google and just gave advice about these kind of things. And so a lot of people kind of like popped out of nowhere. It, it was very encouraging. That is cool. I think honestly that probably ha- I because I kind of saw that happening too. I think that's because so many people like if you work at all in this in that industry and you've had to deal with Google as a professional like you know how terrible that is. So as soon yeah. as they saw that happening to you guys they're like no fuck that. Like I'm getting in there yeah. I'm going to help them out. Cuz that's crazy. You're like oh like but then people like no this has happened to us too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's it's a really big problem honestly. It's that's crazy that uh that you didn't even get to resolve it like i because i thought from my perspective it was like they resolved the google thing and now they're still on google but it's like yeah that's crazy man and the fact that that original is still suspended i thought it got unsuspended yeah so that's that's so crazy oh yeah no one's gonna look at the appeal it'll that'll just sit Mm. there forever like no one's gonna check that yeah it's crazy (laughs) it's so crazy Um, yeah yeah, and I have a thing. I have a prediction: people are going to move off the cloud stuff. I think the really, you know, I think it's going to come come full circle. Yeah, we're going to go back to waterfall. Yeah, no, they're going to get on the cloud. But cloud, we need to get off cloud. Yeah, bring your own servers. 
Interesting. So, yeah. That's my I don't, predictions. <laughs> yeah, but it's so expensive though. Like I don't know if most people you know, like networking, it's a whole other ball game. You know what I mean? Like uh, you mm. could be you could be really good in software and then just like not really have that much networking know how and you know, then putting up your That's own true. server is gonna be tough. And yeah, it's it's they really have us by the balls, I'd say, with the hosting. It's pretty bad. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and, and the cost is so high for doing it yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, but I would, you know, that might, that might be honestly for you guys, I, that's a pretty good suggestion, you know, to take it in house, like for what you guys have to do. Um, I, you know, not, I'm not giving you suggestions or anything. I'm just saying that's a, that's a pretty, <laughs> uh, that, that maybe would be a pretty good idea. Cause it sounds like that's such a, a nightmare what you guys went through dealing with all these other companies that, uh, that, have to, and I see, I see it even happen, uh, like recently payday three came out and, uh, you know, they had the same thing where they, their third party server hosts, they couldn't handle the traffic and they had to move it over to, you know, it's like they always, it's always that bottleneck and there's nothing you can do about it. Cause it's out of your hands. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I really, really appreciate you, you know, coming and talking. I'm glad that you enjoyed the video. You didn't think that uh, my predictions or whatever were like uh, dumb. You know what I mean? Like you weren't. Wa it's good to, that you were. You weren't watching. You're like, oh yeah, right. Like I'm, it's good to know. I was pretty on the money with some of that stuff. Uh, it's just a domain thing when you're like, oh, they got it in 2021. I was like, no, shoving <laughs> this. <laughs> well, that's a crazy assumption that someone else bought the domain fishtank dot live specifically Dude. in 2021. Like, why would anyone else have bought that? That was my logic. I was Just like, well, of course. I guess domain names are like a weird, it's like a weird market of domain names. People will just buy them and hold on to them and yeah, sell them randomly. You never know. So you track yeah, down the actual, down the yeah, that's lucky because yeah. if you have to go through one of those domain brokers, they're no, gonna gouge you. you. Don't do that. They're you, gonna gouge you. Don't you. Go, don't use the domain brokers. They always do the the who is, and even if it's protected, you can still you can still contact them or to the registrar. That's just what the brokers do. So they're just charging you to to be that. a middleman. Yeah, yeah. It's a total racket scam, and then they'll quote you like, "Yeah, it'll be ten thousand dollars for that domain." Like, yeah, they they a hundred percent will yeah. charge you more than yeah. What, the owner is asking so yeah that's really good advice too yeah it's crazy that uh you had to track that but it's good you got it though that's that's yeah, it was not too bad you found them and we're like we'll give you 500 dollars for this domain name you're just like okay <laughs> uh, easy <laughs> yeah um yeah man like i'm so so excited for season two i'm really excited to see everything the new site's gonna have in store and uh you said the watch party is october 9th you said yeah october the 9th and you can go on the website right now yeah yeah i was on it um i didn't log in but i was on it because uh, i assumed logging in would do nothing actually that's why i didn't even bother but you can log in it's totally usable I gotta make it more obvious that you can do that. The stuff's gonna change, so it's it's like uh it's so cool. I, I, I can already see like the new aesthetic that you're mentioning, like how that's taking shape. Like I'm excited to see that too. I think it's cool that you guys aren't just you know, you didn't just you're not just gonna put it up again with the exact same everything. Like you you really are gonna make it. It's a whole new experience, you know, for the most part for season two. I think so I'm cool! Sharing. Oh yeah! Oh, so it's so cool right now. Really. And so there's people here chatting now. We also added clans, so you can. Oh yeah, you can join clans. We got a couple clans right now. Uh, like the Mondo Megabits clan, and uh, they can pool together tokens to buy fish toys, and you can you can attack people in enemy clans. All kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, we had these new things called the big toys. So some of the, the crazy things. Uh, one called Finch, which is like I think it's like a hinge or whatever. You can you can buy it at dinner. People can buy 
dinners with people on the show or fish B&B to stay overnight. You can stay overnight in the fish tank. Dude, that is insane. Uh, you can check this out on the website anyways. And, yeah, that's so um, cool. Yeah. Wow. There's missions now. And Dude. Bunch of stuff I'm forgetting. You guys are going so hard. You guys are going way extra for this one. Oh, I, I, yeah. I've been going hard on, on this for, for the past a bit. We had to do um, TTS AI voices. So, like, actually, I don't know. Can you hear? Can you hear my sound? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello, fishies. <laughs> Wake up. Fishy, fishy. That's the retard voice. You can also pick, like, uh,. <laughs> The African doctor. Fish tank. Oh, that's a nasty ailment. <laughs> oh my god. Two spoonfuls of ground rhino dust. Fish be gone. So you can like send the text to speech messages in these different voices. That's so crazy. Wow. Yeah. People are gonna <laughs> I can't even fathom all of the ridiculous stuff that people are gonna do when the show's going on with that that's so wild that's a lot of functionality that you're building it's really cool to see like you know fish season one was definitely like the let's just get this to work you know what i mean like that was definitely it seems yeah. like let's just get everything to work all the base feature and now it's cool to see all right what can we do to just get crazy with it now that we have something that works that we know how you know how it's going to work now let's build what can we add to just make the experience even crazier that's extra yeah. like it's really cool to see that because like a lot of times in the house you were just like sleeping or whatever so what are you supposed to do then i don't know so I'm trying to think of like more stuff to do when there's nothing really happening in the house or there's nothing going on so so now yeah, you're you're tr you're trying to figure out how to keep people on even longer by giving them things to do. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, more yeah. stuff to do, make it more engaging, and uh, I wanted to have also just more things that people could do with like each other. So like the clans, and that you can tip people tokens now. That was something that I had in, in the original one. I had to go, but you can you can do that now. Just yeah, do missions and earn medals i can't wait to yeah. uh i can't wait to start grinding out on fish tank live just just grinding <laughs> missions yeah. on fish tank grinding <laughs> missions yeah <laughs> you, you complete missions and you earn these medals they're like all oh that's so cool the garage cam so you earn this one for what? watching the garage for an hour watch the garage for an hour dude oh my god hour is great I can't wait. People have already grinded some of these achievements. I saw. I oh yeah, yeah, dude. This one's called. Yeah, like, people are yeah into it, and uh, there's one that's called like annoying cunt, and it, you have to get muted by five other users. <laughs> Just stupid <laughs> achievements. Like this is much ridiculous. The, <laughs> the achievements that you wish existed on like Halo and Call of Duty when you play it, and other and and stuff like that, <laughs> like the stuff that you wish you could see. That's so funny, dude. Oh my yeah. god. Dude, I can't wait. That's so cool. I mean, it seems like you, yeah, it seems like you've been very busy. Did you start production on this like right after the show wrapped? Or did you take, you're like, I gotta take a month to myself, like to, before we get into to the next, to the next round? I was pretty much right away. Let's, let's go. Man, dude, you're, a, you're a beast, man. <laughs> That's crazy. I definitely would need to. I would definitely need to take a vacation after all that. Like, just calm my nerves. You know what I mean? Like, that's your a, you're a different yeah, breed. I have other projects I work on and stuff, so it's not all, it's not all fish tank. Yeah. I get, I get a change of scenery. Yeah, I think that's important, like, to have other projects, too, that you can kind of cool down from the stuff that's problematic or whatever and takes and then you work on that stuff and you come back fresh eyes to the to the other thing and it kind of helps you yeah, that's, figure that's that out good. Yeah. yeah you get tunnel vision mm -hmm. and then sometimes you need to like go do something else yeah definitely that's so exciting it's, i i can't i'm gonna be there for the for the watch party that's so sick oh, yeah. um and the new mint oh. of mondo is the same day right of the watch party is that true yeah. I think so. Um, that's so cool. Same day. That's so cool. Yeah, dude. The 
I love the aesthetic of everything. I agree. Like that, ta the taste that they have for that aesthetic and design is so. I I'm such Very. a big fan. And the cards are funny too. Honestly. The cards are fucking hilarious, dude. Like I I look I read the cards that he posts and I, I laughing out loud at some of the stuff. Is um yeah. is is Kovar gonna be helping with the the next one or was he only helping season one for some extra you know side yeah, stuff? Yeah, no, he's on board. He's he's on board. So cool, very cool. That's awesome, man. Hey, man, I I greatly greatly appreciate you taking the time to talk and show me all this stuff. You are a very impressive developer for having been able to make all this stuff happen and uh it seems like sam he has a great person in his corner to help him execute on these insane ideas that they have and, and that's hard to find it's hard to find somebody who speaks the same kind of language is like into the same stuff as you and is just as ambitious wants to say yeah. yes you know what i mean and and like do that and so it's rare and it's it's great that you guys you know are able to to work together because clearly amazing stuff's coming out of it so um it's very very exciting uh i i appreciate you taking the time to talk and uh you know, man, I will be there to watch when uh, everything goes live. I'll be rooting for you. Like I said, if you need any, <laughs> if you need any help, any QA testing or anything like that, uh, yeah, you actually, know, yeah. hit me up. You know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, sure. it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and I don't know if there's anything that you want to plug, any of your other side projects or anything like that, or your website. I wanted to share a little about the little dark website that I was working on pretty cool so check that out. i'm very happy with how this one this one turned down yeah, uh, that's really cool he's a really good, he's a really cool artist and just has like his his two dates on it there's also like a drum machine that he custom made for this website that you can like make beats with it's it's very cool so i'll plug, I'll plug that and just then october the 9th it's gonna be the the live watch party in the mono megabits mint so that yeah. drum machine so cool that's very like early 2000s that Flash was what that was when up. web dev was so fucking sick like that was when it was the coolest was when people would make stuff like that and just have it on their website for no reason like just to be extra now everything's yeah. all minimalist and stuff but like back I then agree. it was just like know. so it yeah. was way cooler i understand why that's home star a, runner .com? yeah right like that was that's a yes that's what well like he said he's like he's like i'm on the website like star <sighs> you're like you're speaking my language a man after my own heart yeah no i think uh i and that's part of i obviously that dna is in fish tank as well like that kind of just hearkening to that era of just excess like that you know that kind of in the aesthetic and design and everything like that um it's yeah. very very cool is this watch party kind of like a bit of a test on that like yeah, just to make definitely. sure yeah 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 so you get a lot of new stuff and so a lot of new features and a lot of new things to do. And that just means more stuff that could go wrong. Yeah. More stuff to break. Yeah. I, I kind of thought because like this, the watch party and stuff hasn't been, it hasn't been pushed so, so much. Like you guys aren't going super hard to market it because it seemed like you kind of wanted it to be an earlier kind of test, a little bit of a public beta test yeah. you know just to make sure so all those features that you showed that's all going to be live for the watch party um yeah i don't think we're going to have the fish toys on we might get turned on later but the plans the missions the chats there wow that's really cool yeah so we're testing it all that's crazy that's really cool man well hey man i really really appreciate you taking the time to talk it's been amazing uh i yeah it's been cool i'd even love to do it again sometime you know maybe when we get yeah, closer we to again. fish tank or after or whatever you yeah know? I, I appreciate talking to you too man it's like it's, it's great I like, I like your channel and your videos and they're, they're good to watch and um uh, thanks so much man i hope you, i hope you have a great night over there yeah <laughs>
<laughs> yep, going to bed now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks so man. much. Yeah, it was I really nice it. talking to you, man. It really means a lot to me when you guys like the video. If you enjoy it, it lets me know you like that kind of content and I should keep doing it. And it also means a great deal to me when you guys subscribe. Hit that bell as well to get notifications. Subscribing is free. Please subscribe if you enjoy and you want to see more videos like this. I cover a wide range of topics in tech and video games and a bunch of other stuff that interests me. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me. You have no idea. And I'll see you on the next one. I hope you're having a great day.